favorite part of my job is to be in the operating room when we get an electrode into the right spot and we turn it on and we watch somebody's tremor get instantly better. It's commonly said that neuroscience is the last frontier. It's a universe in three pounds inside our skulls. Everything we experience, it's all in that small space. At Rhode Island Hospital and Brown University, every day we work to understand that universe a little bit better, come up with better ways of repairing it and fixing it when things do go wrong. People are mystified by brain and brain surgery and how the brain works. For us, this is something very routine and this is something that we do for our patients on a regular basis. Functional neurosurgery is that discipline within neurosurgery which aims to restore function and help people with movement disorders. Epilepsy surgery is often considered a part of functional neurosurgery as well. At Rhode Island Hospital, we have a procedure, deep brain stimulation surgery, by which we can implant an electrode into the brain and bypass some of the aberrant firing potentials in the brain and make patients move better. The brain's like a giant network of a lot of interacting little pieces. Those pieces communicate with electrical impulses, and deep brain stimulation and lesion procedures interrupt and modify those electrical impulses. If you have a movement disorder such as Parkinson's disease, the time to start thinking about deep brain stimulation is actually pretty early in the disease. The data suggests that doing deep brain stimulation earlier for Parkinson's disease may actually be more beneficial than waiting to do it later. Touch your nose again. Touch my finger. Early in Parkinson's disease, the medications that patients get actually make their symptoms much, much better. Typically, people won't be in a hurry at that point to be thinking about invasive surgery. Over time, the medication side effects start to pile up and the medications are less effective at controlling the symptoms and that's typically when patients start seeking out deep brain stimulation. But there is evidence that considering it even sooner might be even more beneficial in the long run. The Fast Track Clinic at Rhode Island Hospital is a great resource. In order to find the patients who are going to benefit the most from deep brain stimulation, um, it actually takes a whole team of specialists. So, from so much so that it corresponds with the cognitive deficits you guys are reporting. You will come into our clinic on a single day. You will be evaluated by the neurologist, like that, by the neurosurgeon, okay, okay, just to sort of smooth. By the psychiatrist. By the neuropsychologist. It's harder to organize his thoughts. The speech therapist. He loses track when he's in the middle of a sentence. The swallowing specialist. The one on the penetration aspiration scale for all swallows. And the physical therapist. To try it one more time. This process makes it easier for the patients to come in and be evaluated for a surgery that can potentially restore their quality of life. Sometimes patients don't realize that the poor quality of life that they have is due to any particular one of these symptoms. Deep brain stimulation surgery can be done a lot of different ways. The way we like to do it at Rhode Island Hospital utilizes the best available technology and the most information that we can get to make the surgery safe, to make it accurate, and to make it comfortable for the patients. Most prospective patients think that deep brain stimulation is going to hurt. In reality, the only thing that feels pain is the skin. Once you numb that up, everything beyond it shouldn't hurt. If at any point the patient expresses any sort of discomfort at all, we can always give more local anesthetic to the skin. Everything beyond that feels no pain. We do the procedure in three steps. The first step is the implantation of skull screw markers. The second step is the implantation of the electrodes themselves. The third step is the implantation of the pulse generator battery that then gets connected to those electrodes. We don't use the big stereotactic head frame that a lot of other hospitals use. We use a small stereotactic platform that's custom designed for each patient and that fits on top of their head. Using that 
it allows us to aim for the target with much less room for error. From my point of view, it makes the targeting safer. The reason for doing the procedure awake is so we can actually see the symptoms get better right before our eyes. It allows the surgeon to communicate with the patient and assess what they're feeling, record signals from the brain that help fine tune our accuracy, and to test for side effects. The battery that powers the stimulation is usually implanted in the chest wall underneath the skin. All the wires that go up to the electrodes are all underneath the skin. It's very hard to tell when somebody has a deep brain stimulation system implanted. When patients are considering deep brain stimulation, they really want to restore their quality of life. We've been doing this and specializing in this area for a while. We've seen enough excellent outcomes to be confident that we're doing a good job at delivering this kind of therapy. This is not a curative procedure, it is a restorative procedure. And what it does is it turns back the clock a little bit on the symptoms so that you feel the way you did years before when your disease was less severe. If you're considering deep brain stimulation, you should talk to your neurologist about it. You should come to a support group where patients who've had the procedure can show you what it's done for them. It doesn't hurt to just look into it. It's much better to see patients who come to see us too early than to see patients who come to see us too late.